Sprites are these massive flashes of light that can sometimes be seen way in the upper atmosphere above strong thunderstorms. They can be massive structures, sometimes tens of miles tall by tens of miles wide, and sometimes when bright enough or close enough, they can even be seen with the naked eye. The process that causes red sprites is much the same as what causes the auroras. It's the excitation of atoms in the upper atmosphere, which ultimately causes it to glow. And the auroras glow green because it primarily has oxygen atoms being excited. And sprites are red because it's primarily nitrogen atoms being excited. The auroras happen way, way higher in the atmosphere than sprites do. They're up around 100 to 500 kilometers in altitude, whereas sprites are around 40 to 100 kilometers. But in some really strong auroral events, you can see pink fringes along the bottom edge of the green aurora. And that's usually where the high energy particles have penetrated way down into our atmosphere and it's exciting nitrogen at that 100 kilometer altitude, right around the top edge of where sprites reach. Sprites usually happen over really strong thunderstorm complexes. And in these complexes, there's a lot of charge being transferred around, as you can see in the intracloud lightning. There can be really complex areas of different charges all through these big thunderstorm systems, which lead to these big intracloud flashes between positive and negative areas of the clouds. It's only the most powerful of lightning strikes that cause sprites. And 999 times out of a thousand, there's one right. You saw it. It's huge positive strikes. <laughs> and these big positive strikes involve a huge draw of positive charge from the local clouds, which gets discharged into the ground below. And then what can be left in and around the cloud is this really strong negative charge layer. Looking up above the thundercloud going up towards the ionosphere, the air gets less dense as we go higher, and the very high upper atmosphere has a net positive charge. And now with this new, mostly negative screening layer at the cloud level, we end up with a huge electric field above the thunderstorm between the two different charge layers. And in this layer at about 70 kilometers altitude, the air is just dense enough that it hits this critical breakdown limit. And at this level, ionization and heating occurs, and the air breaks down. And what happens is we get all these electrons shooting up towards the positively charged ionosphere, and then the positive ions that are left shooting downwards towards the negative cloud tops. And over just a matter of milliseconds, we get this huge structure formed in the upper atmosphere, which is the result of light being emitted from the electrical excitation of nitrogen.